Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, coming. Um, as you know, in, in July, I signed the balanced budget. Although we faced the worst decline in state revenue in at least 50 years, which was a direct result of the national economic downturn, we were able to prioritize our limited resources to invest in a reformed education system by cutting spending and by resizing government. In fact, we reduced state government spending by nearly $2 billion compared to actual spending in the previous budget. That actual spending reflected more than one and one half billion dollars of cuts, which had already been made in response to the recession. Still, those cuts were not enough. Even after those spending reductions, the legislature and I faced a gap of nearly $900 million, which we were needing to solve. At the time, we had three essential choices to fill that gap. Raise taxes, cut more, or find another source of revenue. I did not believe that a tax increase was wise during a recession. I also did not believe that further cuts were a viable option because they would have hurt the most vulnerable Ohioans. Further, cuts, for example, would have meant Ohio children would go without guaranteed access to health care, or that those who need medical oxygen would have access to it. That was simply intolerable. Further cuts would also have made it impossible to prioritize education as we did. We could not have initiated 21st century school reforms, kept college tuition costs down, or help workers acquire the skills they need to find and keep jobs. These are the exact priorities that will position Ohio for growth after the recovery. They are where we must invest. So I put forward a plan, a plan to authorize video lottery terminals at Ohio's seven racetracks, which we conservatively estimated would have brought in revenue to approximately, uh, in the amount of approximately $851 million for our schools. Those resources also ensured a balanced budget. Now, last week, the Ohio Supreme Court ruled that the video lottery terminal proposal is subject to referendum, a decision that I disagree with, but I am obligated to abide by. That decision by the state Supreme Court made it a practical impossibility to utilize video lottery revenue in the current budget and reopened uh, an $851 million hole, placing our schools at risk of funding cuts and our budget at risk of imbalance. Now, waiting until November 2010 for the referendum, even if it were to be successful, still denies the state the revenue necessary to protect our schools from devastating cuts in this biennium. Now, some have suggested placing video lottery terminals on the ballot at an earlier date, such as in May. That would still be too late to generate the necessary revenue to fund education. And this would not resolve the legal challenges continuing to face the state today. Now, an outstanding question remains before the courts, whether or not the Ohio lottery has the authority to implement video lottery terminals without legislative approval. We need to hear from the courts on this constitutional question, and I will seek a declaratory judgment for clarification. But while we wait for that clarification, 
we must find another way to balance the biennial budget. The legislature and I find ourselves confronted once more with a shared responsibility to balance our state's budget. Again, I believe there are three primary options before all of us as ways to fill that budget gap. One option is to raise taxes such as the state sales tax. A second option is to cut $851 million from Ohio schools over the biennium. A third option is to freeze the income tax rates at the 2008 level, postponing the final 4.2% reduction while leaving in place the rate cuts made to date. Of these three options, I believe the worst possible decision is to cut education funding. We crafted a lean budget that prioritized education because improving our schools is the single most effective thing we can do to attract new jobs to Ohio and prepare the next generation of Ohioans to fill those jobs. I have spent nearly every day for the past two months meeting with business leaders and workers to discuss how our education reform has been implemented and what it will do to help their businesses grow.